Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Tuesday, July 16th, and over here in the Atlantic, a uh, rather messy pattern going on right now in the Gulf of Mexico and the Bahamas. Uh, there's one surface trough here, uh, which is being pushed into the Mexican coastline pretty fast here, generating some thunderstorms, but not likely to have the time to really develop. The NHC actually put an invest on this, uh, labeling it Invest 97L, and then later said that that was a test invest uh, for moving the NWS over to the new supercomputer that they will be running models on in a couple of weeks and uh, so that was not really a real invest here uh, so the NHC doesn't think this is going to develop and neither do I uh, moving inland but bringing lots of rain with it uh, we have a surface trough moving through the Florida Straits with thunderstorms blowing up in response to an upper level low that is currently over southern Florida this is moving westward uh, the Canadian tries to do fun and games with this and try to develop it in the central gulf but it has no other model support and I think this upper low really should keep things pretty sheared and messy in the Gulf of Mexico and so no imminent threats for tropical development here but a lot of thunderstorms nonetheless out in the rest of the Atlantic, you can see it's starting to get less active since Chantal left and uh, really not much convection or thunderstorms going off in this area. And the reason for that is because the MJO is moving uh, past our area of the world and moving onward. And uh, that this is really the big controller of activity early on in the season. When the MJO is around, storms have a better chance to form. When it's gone, not so much. And that's because in the early season, environmental conditions are still not terribly favorable. So storms are rather fragile. So we really need the MJO's support before August and September, after which it doesn't matter quite as much. But it matters a lot now, and you can see right now in the orange colors there's air piling up in the upper levels in the Atlantic, and air piling up up there tends to sink downward, and that's the downward phase of the MJO, keeping things quiet, and that will likely keep things pretty quiet for the next week to ten days in our part of the world. Most of the upward motion where air is diverging aloft is over here now in the Indian Basin and the Maritime Continent. But the European is now forecasting the MJO uh, to start turning back around. Normally what you have is the MJO coming counterclockwise around this plot here, and that means it's moving from west to east. Uh, and uh, you can see that it's been moving that way until about now. It's hard to see, but here it is. You can see it's starting to turn around, and the European forecasts it to continue turning around and coming right back into phase two here. And phase two is an active phase uh, for tropical waves over Africa and uh, can favor the eastern and central Atlantic for potential development in that region, similar to when we got Chantal. But the, every week that we get later into the season, the conditions become more favorable for storms like Chantal to actually survive and become hurricanes. And so eventually we're probably going to bust out our first Cape Verde storm uh, that will become a hurricane. And right now, uh, there's not a lot uh, coming imminent. The next week will likely be quiet, but there is a tropical wave over western Sudan here that is moving westward and will make it out over the Atlantic Ocean in about a week. And the reason I bring this up is because the GFS has been periodically developing this system on and off. This is the current run from 18Z at day 8, showing a nice sharp wave axis here coming off Africa and coming westward. Uh, it hasn't been the most consistent with developing this, uh, but it's worth bringing up because the Canadian also shows the same wave at about the same time frame and typically the Canadian uh, does not hype up African waves the way it does uh, other systems that it blows up into hurricanes every other day. When it shows a strong wave that the GFS also shows that tells me to watch it because when these two models agree uh, it's uh, usually a significant disturbance in the atmosphere. The European does not really show this yet and so that will be key to watch for but the European has also been rather bad at picking up the storms so far this year. So we will see still very long range this wave is a week from water and at least two weeks from the Lesser Antilles if it does develop and come this way so really nothing to worry about uh, but that will probably be our next chance for a storm um, in about 10 days so we will keep an eye on that. Now, uh, since it's quiet, take a moment. Uh, I'd like to take a moment to update uh, the season forecast, or at least what's going on with that uh, for the rest of the season, because we're still in mid-July. Uh, the meat of the season doesn't start until August, and it's August 15th through October 20th when the most hurricanes form in the Atlantic, and uh, we will get to that period soon. And uh, there's still debate as to what may happen this summer. It's not all set in stone yet. Uh, you know what my forecast is for an active season, or at least a little more active than normal. The European over the last few months though has disagreed. This is the European model, one of the best we have for forecasting the pressure pattern in the tropics from months in advance. And right now the red colors here from the July forecast that just came out shows more high pressure for the August, September, October period, the peak months of the season, indicating a complete shutdown of the basin. According to the European, we will have a non-season. 
uh, which is good news uh, if you are a fan of not having any storms to worry about. And the CFS from the, the American model uh, kind of agrees with the European lately. However, I still think uh, it's a little bit biased towards this solution. And the UK Met, which is another European model, is also fairly good. And it has undergone a flip. This was its June forecast for sea level pressure. You can see orange colors here indicating high anomalies of pressure in the Atlantic, similar to the European, showing again a fairly unfavorable pattern. But this month, uh, the new forecast came out and it switched over to green colors indicating below normal uh, pressures here. And its probability forecast indicates a 60 to 80 percent chance that pressures will be below normal in here. Also notice that we flipped over the sign of the pressure anomaly in the eastern equatorial Pacific. Notice it was green here indicating below normal. Now it's yellow indicating above normal. And this is a more La Nina-ish pattern. This was a more El Nino-ish pattern. And a La Nina-ish pattern is more favorable for the Atlantic because it causes air to converge towards the Caribbean and Central Atlantic in the low levels. And it decreases the level of wind shear across the tropics. So overall, this is a much more favorable pattern than last month's forecast on the UK Met. And here's the sea surface temperature forecast from the UK Met. You can see in June, it was pretty cold across the tropical Atlantic, and you saw it trying to develop an El Nino in the Central Pacific. This month, look what's happened, a dramatic flip, now showing actually a moderate La Nina on the model, which actually may be overdone. But it's very interesting that it, is, it has flipped its Enzo phase, and it's a lot warmer in the tropical Atlantic as well. It's interesting to note that between these two images, if you're used to looking at model grids, uh, you will notice that there is a higher resolution uh, look to this image, and it may be that the model got an upgrade between these two forecasts. So it'll be interesting to see whether this new forecast has any more skill than the old one. So now the UK Met has flipped to showing a favorable Atlantic hurricane season as of July's forecast. And the Brazilian model is the only other one I can find that actually shows a favorable pressure pattern with lower than normal pressures in the Atlantic and uh, higher pressures relatively in the equatorial Pacific. This would again be a favorable pattern for the Atlantic. And uh, the Brazilian model I bring up because it has actually beaten the European as good as the European is, it has beaten it during the last two years in forecasting the pressure pattern in the Atlantic during the summer. And so that is worth watching to see if it will beat it again. And remember, uh, the reason I think the European is wrong is because of the ocean temperatures, uh, which have been uh, relatively cool in the Indian Ocean, uh, very cool off of South America here, and uh, warm in the tropical Atlantic. And when you have that kind of a pattern, uh, that really sets up upward motion in the Atlantic. And we're already seeing uh, kind of the effects of that. Usually when we have the MJO hanging around here, it's been hanging around this area a lot, phases one through three, and you can see it tries to leave, and now it's coming back again. That could be a sign of how the warm water in our part of the world is attracting the MJO back to our region, bringing upward motion. So that is something to keep an eye on. Uh, the rest of the season, uh, I think, will be active. I'm calling for 14 to 16 named storms. Long-term average is 12, or 11 to 12, and uh, about 100 to 120 to 150 percent ACE accumulated cyclone energy that's been my forecast since March it has not changed uh, but regardless of what actually occurs uh, this season has the potential to bring storms ashore as does every year so please be prepared no matter what the season brings any storm can get you in any year so uh, please be ready all right that's it for today thanks for watching